This video was sponsored by Paper Life. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've been journaling since I was in high school in 2017 and now I'm 21 years old and I still do that. So why not share with you guys my method of journaling? My journal has really helped me cope, process, appreciate, and remember what happens to me on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. And I usually journal on my free time, but I even do it even though I'm stressed with schoolwork because it's such a great stress reliever. And time flies so fast, guys, so it's really nice to be able to look back what happened to me last year, a few months ago. But yeah, this video is gonna be in three to four sections, so just check the timestamps down below. Also for context, I'm currently using GoodNotes, my Apple Pencil, and my iPad to digital journal. But if you're not into digital but still want to journal, I think you guys can still use my tips in another way, whether it's on a physical notebook or another app. Like I've seen different people use my template on Microsoft PowerPoint or some even printed my templates, so it's up to you guys. Because the key to successfully transitioning into a journal lifestyle is honestly to do what works for you, not works for others. Like I used to bullet journal in high school and make my weekly spreads from scratch but I found that too tedious and I'm too lazy for that so I switched to a ready-made planner from Muji. And that worked for about 3-4 to four years but 2020 happened. And eventually I stopped looking at my physical planner and since I'm on my iPad so often, I just transferred to a digital journal slash planner and it's been working for me for the past few months. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first, let me give you guys an overview of my template which I made on my own using Photoshop. And as you can already tell just from the title page, I tried to copy my past Muji planner style because that layout has been working for me since 2017. I also placed stickers or transparents all around it so that it's cuter and more personalized to my own aesthetic. So I have a monthly page which I don't really use to place deadlines because I use Google Calendar for that. Instead, I would just place one photo a day so that I could see my month in a glance and I would decorate it with my pen and add some more stickers to it. But I'll explain more about this later. I also added hyperlinks which I did using Adobe Acrobat so it's easier to navigate. Then when I press a certain area, it will redirect me to the certain week I want to go to or it can redirect me to the monthly spread. So now for my weekly spreads, this is the layout I prefer wherein it's divided into two. The left side would have the dates and everyday spreads which I use for my journal and the right side would usually be blank so I can put whatever I want and personally, this is where I put my daily to-do lists. Now on to my daily digital planner which is my literal lifesaver for time management in school. I also have a task list on Notion for each of my classes but those are just general requirements that my professor gave to us or listed to us for the entirety of my course. Like there, I'll put the list of readings, list of assessments, exercises, and quizzes for each module in our course. But in my planner, that's where I'll be breaking down and dividing each of my requirements into smaller subtasks. And that's when I'll also decide when to do those exact subtasks. Make sure everything, every requirement is accounted for. Like for example, I have a paper due on Thursday, so on Monday, I'll write down on my planner to make an outline or brain dump of ideas of what to say in my paper. Then on Tuesday to Wednesday, that's where I'll be actually writing the paper and making final revisions. Then on Thursday, I'll say to submit that paper on Canvas, just in case I have any last minute ideas for the paper or last minute edit. Plus, I really prefer writing down what I have to do rather than typing it out because I don't know, I think that helps me remember more what I have to do each day. But yeah, now let's go to how I use my digital planner. As I said earlier, I prefer the right side to be blank so that I can put whatever I want. So personally, I use this side as a planner and place three categories for my tasks, which would be school, work, and life. Then I just drew lines to separate each of them and I do this because I really have a lot to do each day in different aspects of my life. So this helps me organize it and make it less overwhelming to think about. Cause it forces me to think of what do I have to do for school? Like do my readings, write an outline for my paper. Then what do I have to do for work? Like edit a video, film a video, or design a poster for my school org. And even take into account things for my personal life and well-being 
like stretching, reading a book, or even cleaning my room. Also, when it's break time, I add a new category and remove school because we were on a break. I have a dedicated page that has a list of things that I want to do during the break and then in my weekly spreads, I added a goals category. I don't know, it just helps give my life structure that school used to give for me. And I'm not saying we have to be productive 24-7 even if we're on a school break. I would even place in my goals what shows I want to watch during the break, so it can be as chill as that. And I don't really feel guilty if I don't accomplish all of it during the week because these are just personal and leisure goals. So yeah, I usually fill up my daily to-do list before starting my day so that I know what to do for the rest of it. I prefer to use the ball pen style in GoodNotes than just write using a grey color since plain black kinda looks too harsh to look at. I would also draw a simple clock icon to signify that it's a deadline or event that I need to take note of. Then I would simply highlight a task once I'm done, which is so fulfilling and satisfying to do. <laughs> I also turn off the straight line settings of my highlighter so that it feels more natural and closer to the uneven lines I would make when highlighting on an actual paper. And the color of my task categories and highlighter actually varies per week because I decide on it based on my favorite color in the color scheme I made for that week, which I'll talk more about later. But before we get into how I journal, a word from today's sponsor, Paperlike. So Paperlike is a screen protector for iPads that aims to replicate the paper writing experience down from the feeling and rough texture of papers all the way to the sounds. So I actually bought a dupe when I first got my iPad last year and used it for a few months. But Paperlike was kind enough to send me the real deal. And I honestly think that my old one was just a normal matte screen protector, so the moment I put on paper like on my iPad, I immediately noticed the difference. Cause they had similar matte textures, but paper like provides a much smoother experience while the dupe kind of felt like sandpaper. So with paper like's proper balance of a smooth and rough texture, I'm able to have more control of my writing and easily write and draw using my Apple Pencil. I also really appreciate how it reduces the glare and fingerprint marks and that it's better for my Apple Pencil tip. So if you guys want to try the paper like screen protector with me, you guys can click the link I put in the description box. And now, back to the video. So on the left side of my weekly spreads are my daily journal entries. And by that, I mean I literally write down what happens to me every day. I'm more of a visual person so I prefer to journal in an artsy and doodle-ish kind of way rather than writing out my thoughts. And I know my journal kinda looks so time consuming, like making it pretty every day, but in quarantine, I felt like switching into this method instead so that my days don't feel exactly the same like I'm stuck in a loop. And through this, I get to appreciate the little things that happens to me each day, whether it be watch partying with my friends, buying something online, starting a new show, or even walking my dogs outside. In my physical planner, I would put memorabilia like stickers or receipt that would commemorate my week or day. And in my digital journal, I would put screenshots or pictures with my friends or whatever happened to me each day. <laughs> So as you can tell, I'm a really sentimental person, so that's what keeps me going in my journal. And as I mentioned, I've been doing this since 2017, so I really picked up this habit of mine. But yeah, before 2020 happened and when I used to be outside each day, of course, these daily journal entries are kinda time-consuming. I would just summarize what happens to me only after each week at the blank right side of my spread, so you guys can do that as well if you don't want to do daily journal entries. Also, I don't actually journal each day because I get lazy or I'm too busy with school. So what I do is I use a plain gray pen on my iPad on GoodNotes. But if you're using a physical planner, you can just use a pencil to write down what happens to me each day on my weekly spreads. But I don't decorate first, I just write it down there. And then I'll erase it once it's time for me to decorate them. But yeah, now let's go to how I decorate my journal. So in the start of each week, I first decide on a color scheme since my to-do list categories and highlights are also based on that, as I said earlier. I think changing colors help establish a separation between each week and makes things look more alive, cuter, and cohesive to look at. I always pick around 3-4 to four colors and they can even be related to what the week is about, like I made my Christmas spread in Christmas colors, how cute! I also prefer less saturated and more chill and light colors so that it's more pleasing to the eyes than using bright and bold colors, but that's just a personal preference, you guys can still use that. 
So the way I choose my colors is first picking what color I want, like yellow or blue. Then I go to the color wheel in GoodNotes and I would draw the color closer to white and gray so that it's less saturated. Then to keep it all in theme, I would have both my highlighter and ball pen in the same colors based on the color scheme for the week. But usually my pen would be in a darker shade so that it's still readable. And I have three different variations for the pen and highlighter sizes. I'll just flash on the screen their differences. But I use each size depending on what I want to say and emphasize on my journal. Like events that are a big deal to me would be in the boldest and biggest strokes, while description and details would often be in the small or medium sizes. But yeah, overall, I usually use the medium or smaller size. And honestly, my best tip in doodling and decorating is to just play around. My trick in making things cohesive is to not let the same colors be right beside each other, and to have each event be in different designs and colors. But yeah, now I'll just enumerate 7 other ways you guys can decorate it too. First are the different ways to make the titles aka the events look cute so it's more interesting to look at rather than just plainly writing them in bold. And just like the title, it also helps to decorate subtitles or descriptions. Personally, I like to add random details about an event and write it in a smaller size. And here are just some of the ways I do it. So when you're running out of creative juices like me, stickers will be your best friend because they make everything a thousand times cuter without needing so much effort from you. I got a bunch of these online and some are given for free by local artists, but some I just got by searching PNGs and transparents, usually on Google Images. <laughs> And other than stickers, I also downloaded a bunch of textures and patterns online, which I'll link down below. I think they make things look more interesting to look at and less plain. Like for example, you can make a photo look cute by adding a digital tape on its corners. Speaking of photos, I also love adding them on my journal, and the ones I place on it are mostly screenshots of my Zoom calls and watch parties with my friends, cause that's literally the only way we can hang out nowadays. Other than that, I also add even just the simplest things like a photo I took of my dog, of myself that day. Moreover, doodling icons that represent what happened is also a great way to simplify things and lessen the amount of words you have to use. Like for example, I bought milk tea, so I'll doodle one. <laughs> and I had a chill Sunday at home, so I'll draw a home. <laughs> it's literally just drawing what happened. And when all else fails, adding hearts, stars, and sparkles makes things 100% cuter. Whether it's filled in or just a shape outline, it will be a great addition to your journal. Now, let's head on to my monthly spread, which is pretty short and simple because I put more effort into decorating my weekly spreads. But yeah, since a lot of things happen to me each day, I try to pick only one thing that's most memorable to put it on my monthly spread. Like, it doesn't even have to be the biggest event that happened to me that day, just the one I want to remember the most. For example, I was so happy on January 10 and 20 simply because I ate my favorite frozen yogurt and milk tea. So what I put in here can be just as simple as that and doesn't even have to be something I also wrote on my weekly spreads I showed earlier. Then by the end of it all, I would see my month in a glance, which you can tell I do mainly through photos rather than doodles. But I still decorate it with some of the same techniques I said I use in my weekly spreads. So I store all of my stickers and patterns in my iCloud Drive so I can access and edit it in between all my gadgets. Problem is though I have to be connected to Wi-Fi or it needs to be already downloaded offline so that I can access it. But yeah, you guys can play around with them and design through trial and error. I also love mix and matching these patterns with a pen and descriptions or another photo on top, whatever I want. One hack I like is to play around with how I crop my photos and it's either into a square so it fits the box or I use the freehand crop tool so I can have more space to write on. My next hack is for when I have a hard time selecting and moving around only one certain element because they're all too close to one another. So I play around with the settings of the lasso tool and turn off handwriting or image or text box so I can select what I want to move. My last hack is to cutting out a certain element, moving things around, and then repasting it if I want that certain element to be placed on top of another. I also love writing details and doodles in the color white or beige to make it all cohesive and cute. 
And lastly, I don't do this every day if that's what you're wondering. It's also alright and normal if I don't have anything to say as you can see where I left some boxes blank. I think having to fill up every box is kinda tiring after doing all of my weekly spreads. So this kinda takes off the pressure of needing to fill up my monthly spread. So yeah, that's it for my video. I hope you guys enjoyed and leave some comments down below if you guys are doing it as well and using my template. But yeah, see you guys next week. Bye!